Welcome to the 2018 Focus on Inclusion Conference. My name is Brady Trageser and I'm a consultant with the Indiana IEP Resource Center. Today I'm here with Dr. Mitch Yell. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, how's your experience been so far at the Focus on Inclusion Conference? Oh, it's conference? been great. Actually, it's my seventh one out of seven and it just gets better every year. It's an amazing conference that uh, you folks put together. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, can you describe the Andrew case and the U.S. Co Supreme Court decision? Yes. So the Andrew case is the second uh, case by her heard by the Supreme Court on the issue of what exactly is a free appropriate public education. Um, to make a long story short, it's kind of started out with the definition of FAPE in 1975. It's really not changed and courts have been required to interpret it. What exactly does fate mean? And the first Supreme Court case ever to hear the, this issue was Board of Education v. Rowley in 1982. This is the second case, uh, the Andrew case. It involved a young boy named uh, Drew who was a student in the Douglas County School District in Colorado and Drew had been diagnosed as being, having autism and ADHD when he was two years old been in the Douglas County School District from preschool to fourth grade. In fourth grade, the parents became very disenchanted with his IEP and his progress, which had essentially stopped, and his behavior, which has worsened. So they approached the school district and asked for a new IEP. Uh, when they didn't uh, really get a meaningful change, they placed their child in Firefly Autism House, which is a private school in uh, Denver, Colorado, and a year later, they went back wanting to keep Drew in the public school and asked for a new IEP, and they did not get a meaningfully improved IEP. So they followed a uh, due process hearing, went through due process, uh, district court, and the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, all holding against Andrew, uh, deciding in favor of the school district, which had a very low standard for what actually constitute educational benefit under FAPE. And uh, the standard was, in the words of Neil Gorsuch from the Tenth Circuit, merely more than de minimis. In other words, education only had to provide a little more than nothing to be sufficient. The parents appealed to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, they they took, the, took the case, very rare to take any case, uh, and in an eight to zero decision, they reversed the courts and decided to remand the case back to the Tenth Circuit using a new standard the Supreme Court had developed. The old standard developed in the Rowley case was that educational benefit had to provide, uh, I mean the IEP, had to be reasonably calculated to provide educational benefit. The new standard is an IEP has to be reasonably calculated to enable a child to progress appropriately in light of his or her circumstances. So it's seen as uh, one of the things they did is they really did away with the de minimis standard saying this merely more than trivial standard is not acceptable um, and uh, remanded it back to the Tenth Circuit who then remanded it back to the district court to decide on this case in light of the new and higher Supreme Court standard. So what are the major implications educators will see that are based on this decision then? Uh, I think the major implications are that if school districts, uh, IEP, or case conference teams, and all the members are doing what they should have been doing all along and doing the kind of things that the IEP Resource Center uh, advocates, writing measurable goals, collecting data, um, having ambitious goals, and then monitoring progress, I think they will be fine. Uh, it's when schools do not do those things mm -hmm. that this district, this case is likely to have a real impact. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, thanks for asking me.